allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm Mrs. Mayor, if you would call the roll, please. I'd be happy to. Anita Shagazinski. Here. Kate Mayer. I'm here. Tim Menninger. Here. Colin Trivett. Here. Lisa Collins. Here. Gary Dunlap. Here. Joe Gittins. Here. Cheryl Hancock. Oh, she is excused. Thank you. Okay, with six of the seven board members present, I would declare a quorum. Uh, approval of the agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, if not, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. I so move. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Kate has motioned and Joe has seconded to approve the agenda as published. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Say no. Motion to approve the agenda has passed. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? Okay, if you would please come forward. <laughs> please come forward and state your name and address. And we have five minutes. <coughs> Hello, thank Hello. you. Uh, my name is Annette Vallejo. I'm a parent of uh, some Holman School District students, and I'd like to talk with the board and uh, community members tonight about um, opening up the possibilities of looking at some new options for our college-bound high school st uh, students. First of all, I'd like to just mention that I have a um, I just came from the junior parent meeting tonight and uh, the room at the high school was packed. I have two daughters who are juniors and are looking uh, ahead uh, at attending a four-year university or, or something of that nature. So hopefully the, the fates will be with us. And a son who graduated from Holman High School uh, in 2011 and who is now a college sophomore, a uh, junior. And um, one of the things that uh, I, I wanted to just mention is, you know, Holman has always been very forward thinking in terms of providing the very highest um, quality of opportunities to all of its students, um, whether they're bound for college or the workplace or whatever. And I know that college and career readiness, college and career readiness is a very uh, strong concern of the district right now as it should be. Um, and there are so many pressures that there's so much to do. And I think it, it would be a very good idea, and I would respectfully ask the, the board to take a look at some of the other options that are available for our high school students who maybe want to get a jump on their college career by looking at other options for college credit. Um, Holman has done a fine job of offering a very nice buffet of uh, advanced placement courses to its high, uh, high school students excuse me, students who are looking at college. And there are some other options as well, as I'm sure perhaps some of you are aware of, um, including um, some college credit through um, articulation agreements with some of the te technical schools, as well as dual credit options, which is a little bit different than youth options. And so I really would like um, you to take a look at what those would look like for our students. I think it's important for us to, to offer our families and students as many options as possible. Um, college credit can either be uh, uh, attained through advanced placement courses, whereby a student takes a course and then uh, chooses to take or not to take the, the placement exam and if they get a certain uh, grade on the exam they may or may not be awarded that college credit that's a wonderful option two of my daughters are, are taking uh, AP courses right now what I think is a, a nice option for us to consider is dual credit which is essentially very similar to youth options in that it allows students to take college credits at the same time of, at, that they're <coughs> achieving the high school credit that they may need in a particular course. The thing that differentiates dual credit from a youth options course is that it is taken primarily in the school of their, uh, their home school. They don't have to travel to campus. So um, it allows them to be able to remain on their school campus. Um, it is t typically taught by s teachers that they know in a, in a uh, a surrounding that they're comfortable with and typically these courses are offered uh, a, 
across the, a full year so they have the chance for um, success because they have a little bit longer to master that college material. Um, I would ask that the board consider these options that are growing um, in number and in, in variety that a number of different uh, schools are offering. The two-year colleges, of course, are offering them and the four-year colleges are offering them because they do allow our students other opportunities. And I think it's very important for our students and our families to be able to look at what all the opportunities are. You might have a student who's taking an AP course and simply cannot take another one because of their schedule, or a, a child who's taking a youth options course who simply cannot be away from their home campus for more than uh, a half of an afternoon. So um, I, I think it would be a very good idea for, for us to take a look at some of these dual credit options. I know that some of this, the teachers in Holman are trained and ready to go to do some of this, um, deliver some of this instruction, and you've got some very dedicated teachers who have taken their own time to do the training necessary to do so. I know there may be some concern about cost, and I'll try to speed this part up if I can. Um, youth options, as you know, uh, if a student wants to take a youth options course wh whereby they, they uh, uh, leave their school and go to the college campus, um, if that course is not offered on their, anything similar to it on their, um, uh, in their school district, then they are, the, the school district is bound to support that child and uh, pay that, those tuition and fees. With dual credit, that is not the case. Uh, the districts are uh, not bound to pay that tuition. Um, it is not part of the statutes. It is a very different animal. Um, many students will, or school districts will uh, uh, have an option to, to get some of that money back, for some of that tuition money back, and then return it to the families. Um, I know that as a parent, not everybody is in a place where they can be um, affording college tuition any sooner than they have to. Annette, I'll have to ask you to wrap it up in about 30 seconds. I will so. do that. So um, I know that when there's a will, there's a way, and there are very uh, generous individuals in the community who can uh, help assist this happen. <coughs> that might, should not be an, an, an obstacle for students. So um, I, I urge the board to please consider dual credit as another option to provide opportunities for our college-bound students and I thank you very much for letting me speak to you tonight thank you very much and dr. Carlson will be following up with you fabulous okay thank you thank you okay is there anybody else who would like to address the board please come forward okay seeing no one else um, we will move along to recognition and thank you um, Dr. Carlson. Two things to share uh, this evening. First of all, we'd like to thank Donald and Vicki Wally for their mm -hmm. recent donation of $100 in memory of their friend and longtime home and educator, Jan Schrader. This gift will fund the acquisition of books for the libraries at our elementary school. So thank you uh, very much uh, to them for remembering the school district of Holman and, um, and their generosity and, and donation. Also, uh, annually, we always look forward to a very uh, appropriate and important recognition as we look to next week. Uh, tonight on the board consent agenda, you'll have a proclamation that the board would be joining school districts across the country in recognizing next week as American Education Week. And so we celebrate all, again, in school district of home and especially, uh, we have so many that contribute to the success of our schools and what we do here as a school community. And so we uh, honor and uh, those people next week. I know that we'll have different activities for our employees uh, next week. And uh, always look, Christina and I, uh, among other things going on, we'll begin with delivering some uh, tasty treats at the beginning of the week and in recognition of our employees. but. As a community, this, this goes beyond our employees, and it's uh, time to celebrate and recognize our entire community for the work that we all accomplish to help our students uh, succeed. So with that, again, the board, you have this on your consent agenda this evening, and I look forward to next week. Otherwise, that's it. 
Okay, thank you, Dr. Carlson. Um, and then we will move along to reports and discussion. Uh, Youth Options Report, Wendy Savasky. And I think in addition to that, and I know Darcy <laughs> Lindquist and Bob, Principal Bob Bear are going to be joining, and I think the three of them are going to present. It's a team effort. Yeah. I just yeah. get the Cliff Notes version on my <laughs> agenda, so. Good evening, thank you. Um, I have the opportunity to be the Youth Options Building Coordinator at the high school. Um, the Youth Options process um, is looking at courses at UW La Crosse, Viterbo, and WTC. So students who qualify for our program, um, for the Youth Options program, can receive both high school and post-secondary credits. Uh, we have some deadlines um, that we have to have, and those are really run by the institutions. So the March 1st deadline is to get ready for the 14-15 school year, mm -hmm. and then we just had the October 1st deadline, um, which was getting ready for this second semester. And this process all starts through the guidance department um, being in contact with their school counselor based on their uh, last name. So students that um, are interested in doing youth options, they meet with their school counselor uh, to see if they are qualified to do youth options and if it fits into their four-year graduation plan. Um, all high school courses are taken um, previously at the high school, so they've kind of maxed out on what we can offer them. Um, if they're looking at taking a course at UW La Crosse, um, if, they're a, if they are a senior, they have to be in the top 25%. If they are a junior, the top 10% and must have an ACT of 26. If they're looking at taking a course at Viterbo, they need to have a GPA of 2.5 or higher and an ACT of 22 or higher. And if they're looking at taking a course at WTC, they need to have a GPA of 2.0 or higher. And then meet any university and tech requirements or prerequisites that might come up with that class that they're looking at. And this is all done with the school counselor to see if they meet those um, qualifications. If they do, the student would fill out that application, gain all the signatures that they need, including their parents, turn that into the school counselor. Um, the school counselor then signs it and turns it into the building coordinator, which this year is myself. And then I would complete the application and mail that to the schools. At that point, the university and the tech schools would then contact the students <coughs> to let them know they've been accepted. This is actually their first college acceptance letter, which is kind of cool. Um, so if they get accepted to that college, um, they will get that letter and then they will start the registration process and any um, prerequisites that come with um, that particular university. Um, so our numbers for this last year, I think you also got in your port board packet the previous years, I want to say all the way back to 2000, maybe it was, 2001. Um, but the um, numbers for this year, um, this fall currently um, in first semester, they're just getting ready to have finals here um, sometime in uh, towards the end of December. We have two students at UWL, no students at Viterbo, and 20 students at WTC. And if you notice down a little bit further, most of those students at WTC are taking our CNA course. Actually, 15 of those 20 students are taking CNA. This previously was a youth apprenticeship program, but because of the changes in WTC and their institution, they create, uh, turned it over to a youth options program. Um, in the spring right now, because um, we had the October 1st deadline, I have eight students who are looking to go to UWL, one to Viterbo, um, and nine to WTC. And again, those nine are the CNA program, so a total of 40 this year. Um, the ones in the spring have been approved by the school. They're waiting to get their acceptance letter from their college and going through that process to see if they've met um, those qualifications. Um, I also know uh, Ms. Vallejo brought up some um, interesting uh, questions about what we have for dual enrollment. Um, and I know this has been um, on people's mind. So to kind of piggyback on what she was saying, um, we do have quite a few ways for our students to earn dual credit while they're at the high school. Um, currently our AP offerings um, of the 30 subjects that a student could take a course or an exam, we offer 12. 
Um, those are the English language and composition, English literature, government, um, U.S. government, um, psychology, U.S. history, calculus AB, calculus BC, statistics, biology, chemistry, and physics. So our students have the opportunity to take courses. At the end of those courses, take those exams. Um, if they're earning on a scale of one to five, um, a three or higher, those are considered eligible for college credit. Um, it is up to each institution as to the awarding of that college credit, um, but they are um, eligible for that. And right now, 75% of our students who take um, the AP course, take the AP exam, are earning a three or more. And even just taking the course itself is preparation for a very rigorous college program. So um, AP courses, and right now the exam uh, last year was $87, um, and there um, is no uh, supplemental way to waive that fee. So 87 is what that costs uh, for one AP exam. If they get a three or higher, the institution would then award the credit. And so that's saving them money. Um, we also have students who take advantage of what's called the retroactive credit. We're mostly seeing this in our world languages, where the students who have excelled in our world languages um, head to the college and they take a placement test, place into the appropriate level, and then that college is retroactively giving that student credit for those years of um, high school world language. So that is another way that students are earning uh, retroactive credit. We also have advanced standing with um, some of our technical colleges in the area. And these are awarded to high school coursework that's not available at the technical college, but it's an articulation agreement and must be accepted as credit for any comparable course at any of those technical colleges. Um, some of the courses that we offer, hot metals two, animal science, Build Your Own Golf Course, Accounting One, Beginning CAD, and Greenhouse. And these are all courses that can be um, articulated. Um, along with the youth options that I talked about, um, and again, we had about 40 students this year that took advantage of that. Um, last year, we did look at the college credit in high school program, uh, working with um, UW La Crosse. And what we found is that um, courses offered for college credit in high school must meet the same standards for instruction, content, student work, and evaluation that is on the UW campus. Our high school faculty must have a master's degree in the discipline in which the course they are going to be teaching is offered. And that specific approval has to come from the university. Students must pay for these courses. Um, it's at a discounted rate, but it is a cost to the student. It, at this point, is for high school seniors who, is at, who are in the 20, top 25% of their class and who have that 26 or higher ACT. And these credits received are subject to UW Systems undergraduate transfer policy. So we have looked into that. Um, and part of our discussion or part of looking into that is definitely the cost um, that limits some of our students. Um, it's available only to seniors at, um, with that 26 or higher, that 25% rank or higher, uh, which limits the access to that also. Um, did I miss anything? Nope. Okay. Good. I think that's all. Questions? Questions? Anyone? Yeah, can you, I, I, just a couple of questions because um, I have heard of the dual credit from some citizens and, and had some questions and I must admit I don't and didn't know probably as much as you do. So a few questions um, and I just kind of went online to see what's out there and what the explanation was. And I do see that DPI has recommended it. Um, and I, it, can you help me wrap my mind around why that recommendation might be there because DPI also recommends youth options and they also recommend AP and it seems it seems like dual credit is really similar in many many ways but there must be some difference and and like the only one I could see and I don't I really don't know if this is true but when I read a few documents it mentions that sophomores juniors and seniors can do this, um, 
and then the transportation, of course, and they're taught by their own teachers, and, and it's a year-long program. So there's a, a few differences. <coughs> if one of you could just address both what you see uh, are the advantages of it, and also what, what prohibits Holman from maybe jumping on that. Because I, I also I read that it's coming, and they're recommending it, and I see a few school districts are going that way as just another option, so. I'm nice and close to the microphone yes. here. <laughs> there, it is one of the options that DPI, you know, along with the options that Darcy mentioned, is a possibility. Right now, the biggest part that we are struggling with is the tuition fee for our students. So I look at it similar to the struggle we have with iPads where we want students to have equal access to the materials. Yes, students could take the class, but if Darcy and Bob's parents <coughs> could pay for the class, but my parents could not, I wouldn't be able to get credit for the class. So looking at ways that we can make options available to all students and not just some. And that's the biggest drop. Right, right now, that's our biggest stumbling block. Do you know if other districts have um, other solutions to that, like a, a foundation, or do you know what the, the districts that are on the bandwagon are doing? Do they, do, do they charge just the students, or are there things in place where foundations can Children. No, I know can't spe speak specifically to other that. districts. Is but there a way to find that out? I could maybe I bet check. You a lot of districts. You know, there's just that. a few districts in the area that yeah. that use this. There's not an overwhelming amount of districts, and I think they're probably struggling with the same thing that mm -hmm. we are because we want options for all students, not just the students that can afford it. So. And as I read it. There are options within the DPI document that don't necessarily make <clears throat> the parents pay for everything. But there's a whole range of what could happen. It could be partial this, partial this, partial this, and there's that 30% refund. Right. So ultimately, if a child could afford it or if a family can, and tell me again, with youth options, are families paying for that? No. The school district is? So. So in dual credit, if the school district paid for it, they could, if they wanted to, get 30% back, and it might be cheaper for the school district. Probably not cheaper than a teacher, because if it's offered in our district, and let's say there's 30 students in the class, the mm -hmm. tuition with the, if I remember correctly, and I could get this wrong, is still about $550 a student with the discount. So if you times that by 30 students and you offer multiple classes, it just, the district wouldn't be able to afford to do that. But in dual credit, not every student in the class takes credit. No. No. Right? They don't have to. They, they could don't still get have a college to. experience without right. choosing to actually pay for tuition. All right. I guess if there's a way to find out if there's creative ways to offer that. To fund it, yeah. Uh, and yeah, the funding question is just, um, yeah, that would be probably the only question I'd left to see if it is just a third alternative. Thanks, Wendy. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? Questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, um, special meeting of the school district electorate regarding the community center, Dr. Carlson. I don't have a, vis a video presentation or PowerPoint. I'm just going to make a couple comments tonight. Um, and I know that uh, Cheryl Hancock's mm -hmm. unable to be with us tonight. And she, along with Mr. Menninger and Mr. Clark, are the key people that you, the board, has uh, tasked with moving um, down the road as far as working on a lease agreement for the land in which a community center would be constructed attached to the high school. Uh, Mr. Clark and I did attend, have been attending recent community um, center committee meetings which have been focused most recently on the development of a lease agreement. 
And um, also, <coughs> Jay and I last week met with your uh, board attorney um, on this very matter as well. And at this time, I'm going to mention here, so I don't forget it, uh, we are planning, and it would be in a closed session, and I think I can certainly explain that further why. I know that's been questioned in the past. We are planning at this time a closed session with the board at the next board meeting, November 25th, regarding the negotiations of a lease agreement. And it would be uh, most appropriate for this meeting to be held in a uh, closed session given the various um, people involved. And uh, the board's attorney will is planning to be present for that discussion as well. At a recent uh, community collaboration committee meeting, there was also a discussion of timelines and sequence of events that need to occur. You may have read in last week's La Crosse Tribune uh, about the community center, which uh, I think was linked with also the talent show that is occurring this week, and which included next steps beginning with completion of a lease agreement with the school district. And the next step stated in the article is also to present the lease agreement to a meeting of the school district electorate for approval. This is consistent with the action that you took as a board last May, on May 13th, where, the, where a motion was approved that, that basically said that, well, actually, I'm just going to read it. Be it resolved that the Board of Education directs administration to pursue the necessary steps to sell, donate, or lease school district property for the purpose of constructing a community slash teen center. The primary site to pursue would be located on the high school property. Any sale, donation, <coughs> and or leasing of land or facility is contingent upon an agreement, which is mutually acceptable by all parties involved, which at this time um, would include the three municipalities of the village of Holman and the townships of both on Alaska and Holland and the school district and would require approval by the electorate of the school district at a special or annual district meeting. And so at our meeting on Thursday with the attorney, and Jay and I shared the most updated information, and again at this time, they are working on a beginning draft of an agreement, as well as other key points that would be part of the discussion with you on November 25th. Representatives of the collaborative uh, committee are planning to provide an update to the three municipality partners in the coming weeks. And regarding the meeting with the electorate, we will have to wait to see the outcome of the lease agreement and how that develops um, your work with that. And so um, uh, hopefully there would be progress as early as November 25th when more information is shared with you. There was a preferred timeline in which to have the meeting, um, the electorate meeting, which um, was uh, talked about in, in January. And so, however, again, we'll have to see if we can continue to meet that timeline or not. And that was a timeline that was really developed by this collaborative committee and that uh, both uh, Mr. Clark and Ms. Hancock has, uh, have been part of for some time now. Um, so, but most important to this process is that we want this to be successful. And um, not just for our school district, but for our communities involved. And so even if that means that we have to adjust some timelines, and uh, I think it's worth it, we want to do this right. I know that, that that's what that committee <laughs> believes in as well. <coughs> this is a positive and good thing for our communities. And, um, but I wanted to just report out to you tonight, that's, that's the update. So the agenda item per, uh, pertains to the special meeting of the electorate. And that means that uh, the board would have to take action on setting a date. And yet you're just not quite ready to do that. I couldn't recommend to you a process or a date in which to do that until we we look further ahead to uh, the, the 25th and learning more on the lease agreement development. And uh, so that's really the next step for the board. And, um, but it, the, special, the special meeting of the electorate 
when it does come, it will require you as a board to take action on setting that date. And we will make sure that the proper timelines for posting and everything uh, does occur and we'll keep you informed on that as well. <coughs> I know I rambled on a lot about uh, what people have been doing, a lot of work. I tell you, I, you've had the opportunity to hear from Lori Kessler and Marilyn Wershoven and Dan McHugh, and I tell you, those three people, um, they uh, obviously, they deserve so much of the credit of keeping the conversation going, keeping looking at this vision for our communities, and I would also have to credit with that committee. You have representatives of the different municipalities that are, boy, they're, uh, they're excited about this, they're committed to this, and um, everybody wants to make sure we do this right. And I, I did learn, I think uh, Mr. Clark, if, I think he would agree that, you know, this, the visioning and looking at a concept, that's part of the fun part, <laughs> that we knew we're gonna get to a point where it's gonna get a little, uh, the tough work's gonna start. And I think we're, if we're not there, we're getting close. And um, it may not, it may be a little messy at times and complex, which I think when you're talking about leasing of land, you're going to you're going to find out more of how complex it is, especially when it is attached to a building. So with that, I'd be happy to take questions, but that's an update. Anyone? No? All right. Thank you, Dr. Carlson. Okay. Uh, board member reports and discussion. I will call upon board members in the order of roll call and ask you to present any comments or committee reports you have, um, starting with Mrs. Mayor. Um, Student Achievement and Learning Committee, we have three issues coming up on the 21st that we'll be looking at and assessing and revamping if, if needed, special ed policy handbook, um, individual education evaluation, and 504s. Um, just a thank you to the veterans today. I know all of us are feeling that way and we'll probably hear a lot of that today. And thoughts for the Philippines. Um, if those of you who would like to know what to do, there's a wonderful website. Um, it's it's on www.interaction.org and it lists all the organizations that um, U.S. citizens can go to from faith-based to United Way. And you can pick your favorite one and make donations through that and uh, shoot them off to your favorite category from children to food to education, whatever is needed in that disaster relief. So please consider that. Um, I just returned uh, from a day and a half workshop <coughs> legislative <coughs> advocacy conference from the State School Board Association, WASB. Um, much emphasis was placed in that day and a half on certain resolutions that are happening soon within um, our state what we as a state organization, and Holman's included in that, what we want to make sure we're talking to our legislators about. And what was emphasized a lot, um, as many of our citizens know, was the impact um, of the tuition tax credit, the voucher, the independent charter expansion, and the <coughs> revenue, revenue limit. Those four things coming together uh, converge um, upon our citizens and what that means for how many dollars we get in Holman, whether we're paying um, money for Milwaukee uh, charter expansion to the, the cap that does come with revenue limits. Um, and there are many more details on that that eventually perhaps we should look at as a school board to see what we wanna do to get our citizens to an awareness level of what's going on in the state, um, some wonderful presentations from some, some uh, just some wonderful people that um, kind of scary to hear, <laughs> but also there are ways for us to be proactive and um, to make our voices heard for our children, ultimately, to make sure that our, our Holman students are getting the best ed they can and the most money they can and the most bang for the buck. So that's it for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mettinger? Uh, just a couple of quick things. Uh, last week, as I know most of us, we attended the uh, board workshop on strategic planning, and um, I certainly, you know, again want to thank administration for putting that together, but I also want to thank all those who participated in that. I know that there were a lot of 
uh, community members, a lot of staff members, a lot of administration all took their time. Uh, their feedback is certainly important. So thanks to everyone who uh, participated in one of those sessions last week. Um, and then also certainly do on this day want to recognize the veterans. It, it seems like a lot of holidays we thank the veterans, which is a good thing. But then actually Veterans Day, it seems a little more subdued. So I want to take a moment and just certainly thank all the veterans on Veterans Day. And certainly they have done a lot for this country. So thanks to all of them. Thank you. Um, Mr. Trivet? Yeah, just again with everyone else, um, acknowledging Veterans Day. My father was a Marine, and so it's mm -hmm. nice to see everyone supporting him and you know patting him on the back and everything like that. And then going out and acknowledging it in class. We talked about it a couple times today in my various classes, acknowledging veterans and what we can do to continually support them. And then also with tonight, talking about the youth options and different college options that are offered by the school district, I just want to reinforce the fact that students like myself and like juniors and seniors very much appreciate and want to continue looking at other college um, credits we can get during high school. I just came from a financial aid and scholarship meeting up at the high school for seniors, so it's coming up fast. And any way we can get college credits looking at from the dual credits or the APs is just very important to a lot of students, including myself. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Collins? Um, I also want to recognize Veterans Day and my five-year-old. Um, at Prairie View brought it to my attention that they're talking about Veterans Day too in the classroom and that's really neat um, and she was kind of talking about the whole idea of you know being a veteran and what that actually means in a five-year-old so it's just kind of neat to even at that level the schools are um, talking about that and recognizing that um, I agree with the youth options too um, at human <coughs> services, I, I mean I work with a lot of youth that transition into adulthood and it's really scary um, anticipating what it's going to be like after high school, what is life going to be like um, going to college or going to tech school, or maybe I'm not ready for this, but it seems like youth options can really provide just a little taste, more, you know, a taste of that so that that transition isn't so difficult. Um, and, and so I think it's a really good thing. Okay, thank you. Mr. Dunlap? Uh, I, I too would like to thank uh, the veterans uh, for their service. Um, I too have a son-in-law who served in the 101st Airborne. And I'm glad to have him home and safe. Um, uh, second, I'd like to say, uh, being a charter member of the website police, I'd like to uh, congratulate everyone on what the website looks like. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful, there's lots of information. It's obvious that a lot of work went into the design and the updates. Uh, thank everyone for making it successful. And if if anyone on the board knows, it's it's me. How much work that website like that can be, and how much effort it takes to put that information in. So I just like to thank everyone for that. And uh, I have to mention, I imagine Tim will start keeping countdown to when the next football practice is. Now the football's <laughs> over, right? Yeah. I just want to mention how Hope proud. Be long. Hope <laughs> be long. I want to mention how proud we are of the of the. The football team and the student body, the parents, and and the, the everything that happened in the last couple of weeks. Um, it's obvious that we're doing something right as a school board, the school district. If if that group of kids and and that team are, are representative of, of the work we do, so very proud of them all. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Gittins. No comments. Uh, a very humble veteran, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, and thank you. All right. Um, I would just like to say um, congratulations to the Holman, uh, well, to all the sports. I think we focus a lot on the main sports, but you know what? They made it so far. <laughs> they made it so far. I was in um, festival Saturday night grocery shopping, and I heard a couple girls in there saying, oh, I was just crying. I can't believe they lost. And I hadn't found out the outcome of the game. And I stopped, and I went, oh, no, oh, no. And I just wanted to hug them, and they were pretty upset. But, um, you know, it, it, you get so proud of them. You know, you talk to the parents, and you see the kids, and you feel the pride of them. And even though I don't even have kids in high school anymore, it's like it, it feels like they're your own kids, and you're rooting for them. And, I don't know. It was it was really cool to watch them get that far, and they hadn't got, gotten that far in so long, and they worked so hard, and they really they were such good sports. They were just such a they were. I was just so proud as a mom to watch them. It's like they're such good kids, <laughs> you know. They they were just a really good example. 
Um, so, and I also just wanted to say thank you to all the veterans. We had the annual Veterans Day program at my school this morning, and I always go in after about the first five minutes because I'm like, oh, I'm not going to go in because I'll just start crying. And, mm -hmm. you know, I always try to find a little corner to stand, and I always get a little weepy. And you see the guys that come year after year, and there's always one or two World War II veterans, and then the younger guys, and then the, the middle aged veterans. And it just, you try to be real stoic and just watch them and thank them and shake their hand on your way out of the gym. And it just, every year, you, you shake their hand and realize where their hand has been and what they have done for you. And they literally have offered their whole life for you and, and offered to, to, to die for our country and offered their life for your freedom. And they came back and you're shaking their hand. But for the grace of God, they're standing there and they've done that. And they're just, they're standing there like it's no big deal. And so thank you to those veterans. And thank you to my parents who are Navy veterans and but they're up at the legion in the sky right now and <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow thank you to all the veterans out there watching and all the veterans who have who have gone on so um that is all i have and then you have some correspondence that you have received you have the uh board meeting schedule we have the november 25th board meeting the no december 9th board meeting the december 23rd board meeting has been canceled. The January 13th board meeting um, you have scheduled. And then we also have the WASB um, conference in Milwaukee, January 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And that's something you would need to let Christina know about by the end of the week if you do plan to attend that. And I would highly recommend it. I've gone in quite a number of years and there's there's a million different sessions you can go to and there's something you can learn even if you think you know everything there is to know about schools and funding and and programming and and legislation involving schools and everything else it, it it'll blow your mind there is so much um, and so many people you can meet that can enlighten you um, and then the school board election notice I will hand that over to mrs. mayor thank you I'm just going to read um, the legalese that lets our citizens know if you're interested in running what you need to do, um, some dates in it and some information. Notice of election of school board members. Notice is hereby given to the qualified electors of the school district of Holman, including the village of Holman, the town of Holland, and parts of the town of Farmington, Hamilton, Onalaska, and the city of Onalaska, that on Tuesday, April 1st, 2014, an election of school board members will be held. There are three terms to be filled, three-year terms to be filled. The three candidates receiving the highest number of votes will fill the three-year terms. The board members whose terms expire are Mr. Dunlap, Mrs. Hancock, and Mr. Gittins. An elector desiring to be a candidate for a position on the Board of Education may obtain a declaration of candidacy at the school district office located at 1019 McHugh Road, that's in Holman, between the hours of 7.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. The declaration of candidacy must be filled out at the time and place noted above or filed personally with the school board clerk on or before January 7th, 2014. Again, before January 7th, 2014. Notice is further given that if a primary is necessary, the primary will be held on Tuesday, February 18th, 2014. And that's it. All right. Thank you. Welcome. And then we will move on to consent agenda items. And Dr. Carlson would like to make one comment. In your consent agenda on <clears throat> item 10.3, the 2014-15 budget standards for funding determination, you would note that the issue paper has been updated since the last board meeting and the only change has to do with the uh, the last paragraph as part of that issue paper and just noting the action um, that's being asked of you this evening also um, also included in your Dropbox or in your folder is an updated rubric and we include that because there was a slight modification 
of the scoring. The, uh, it was one through four, and we have on this template a one through seven as what was recommended or suggested. So I just mentioned that um, as you, there really aren't any significant changes um, for your consideration, and, but I wanted to mention that. And if you have further questions or want further discussion, then I know you'll be pulling that out. Otherwise, I think it's okay to leave it as part of the agenda. Okay. Are there any items that you would like to consider separately? <coughs> All right. If seeing that there are not, I would entertain a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Okay. Is there a second? Okay, Gary has motioned and Lisa has seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Consent agenda has passed. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> Joe has motioned and Tim has seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none. Um, See. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. No. Motion passed. Gary. <laughs> we are adjourned at 747. Have a nice evening. <laughs>